All right, last class we were in uh, 1 Peter. Let's go ahead and just uh, look there, and then we'll move on back to Leviticus. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. We just read this. <coughs> that you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should um, show forth the excellencies of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now this is dealing with uh, you being a priesthood and offering something to God. Amen? You're not just offering praises. You're offering, you, you're offering back to God the excellencies and virtues of Christ. You're offering Christ in a sweet savor. Now that's what the sweet savor offerings did, was that they were burned up and the outward form was lost, but a new form emerged. The essence of it remained. The essence of it was a sweet savor to God, and it rose to God. And so, in other words, the bodily form wasn't where he got the glory. That was actually lost for the sweet essence of the thing to be presented to God. That's Christ in us, folks. That's a, because it tells us that in uh, 2 Corinthians that we are supposed to be a sweet savor unto God through Christ and through his life. <clears throat> so this verse is, is telling us as priests. <clears throat> now, remember, we talked about this in the priesthood, but now we're not talking just about the priesthood side. We're talking about what it is that we offer and, and that is specifically a sweet savor offering. And that means, folks, that this has nothing to do with sin. Your daily walk. This is not talking about, <clears throat> because the sin offering, folks, if, you're, if you go two weeks and you don't, you don't sin per se, then you don't show up at the tabernacle and offer anything. Am I right? If you, if, let's say you had a real good month. And you went a whole month without doing anything wrong, then you don't show up at the tabernacle and offer to God anything for a month. You can forget God. You can forget showing up at the tabernacle. You can forget offerings. Unless, unless the issues are more than sin, and they are, because that altar, that altar had a whole burnt, sweet savor sacrifice going up continually not based on sin now here's one way that you can know that <clears throat> if you go through the new testament scriptures and you study about sin for example the book of hebrews or uh, book of romans particularly chapter six and seven then you will see that the sacrifice of jesus was once and for all for sin, right? Once and for all, for sin. We, we discussed this at some juncture, but if that means that there was a one-time death when it came to sin, and he doesn't have to die again. Because if, if, if he didn't settle all sin, that was 2,000 years ago he died, if he didn't settle all sin, then every time we sinned, Jesus would have to get off of the throne, go back, get on the cross, and die again. Right? But he did, by one offering, forever put away sin. All right. That is typified by the sin offering or the trespass offering where when there was an issue, you took it there and you crucified, as it were, that situation but but on the altar there was a continual burning a continual whole burnt offering burning on the altar night and day every day from the moment God initiated it all and in fact the scriptures will read it'll say this will be a statute to you forever 
forever. Now, wait a minute. No, now, come on now. Forever? No, 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 no. Forever is a different word. No, no. How about for the length of your life? But forever means past our lives, past everything being, if you will, if I can put it this way, wrapped up. For all eternity, still an offering? Yes, but not for sin. Because the sin offering was put away well in adv advance. So when it talks about a continual burnt offering, this has nothing to do with sin. This has everything to do with our responsibility as priests to offer Christ through us back to God. The virtues of Christ through us, the excellencies of Christ through us. When do we do that? On Sunday? No. They, let me tell you something. On the Sabbath day, they had to double up on the whole burnt offering. But you'll, if you'll read, we'll read it probably here in a minute. But God never let them loose from that. Even that, that morning and evening sacrifice of the whole burnt offering never changed. And on certain days, like the, like the Day of Atonement once a year, the, the uh, tenth day of the seventh month, <clears throat> biggest day of the year, the Day of Atonement, man, you, you wouldn't believe all the sacrifices going, being offered. Not just for sin, not just, not just the, the uh, scapegoat being released, not just uh, uh, all of the stuff going on with that but an abundance of extra, major extra on that day of whole burnt offerings. But one thing it says is not only that, but you have to do the daily burnt offering too on top of all of that. Don't ever stop the daily. What does that mean? Christ in you. Christ in you every day. Offering up not because you have to, not because you sin, not because you failed, but because you believe that the only thing the Father really wants is his Son through the body of Christ. All he wants out of the body of Christ is Christ. He doesn't want witnessing. He wants Christ, and Christ will be the witness. He'll be the light. See what I mean? Now, we'll witness. I'm not saying we don't witness. You, you understand what I'm saying. I'm saying... What God is wanting out of the body of Christ is not witnessing first, it's Christ. I mean, that would be like, oh, come on, I'm going to try to paint a picture for you. That would be like God looking to me or, or my wife looking to me or somebody and saying, now, what I want out of you first is witnessing, not you. You see what I'm saying? I mean, like if I was dead, me, if my life was dead, as long as I witness, I'll be pleasing. You see how ridiculous that sounds? Well, the body of Christ is supposed to be the tabernacle of God, the housing of the vehicle of the life of Christ. And God wants his son first, whether he witnesses or not, however he manifests is fine, but he wants his son. You see? Okay. <clears throat> now forget regulations and everything. <clears throat> Sweet savor offering not a regulation, voluntary. It's something that we give God because we know that's what he wants. We know it's a sweet savor to him. Can you, ima I mean, can you imagine being a priest <coughs> and uh, you get out there and uh, on, the, uh, on the continual daily burn offering, there's going to be two lambs one for the morning, one for the night. So you take the lamb, you slit its throat, and you do all the different, because there's, there's stuff to this. It's not just, you know, it's not just like come out with a gun and go, <laughs> poof, poof, and then lay it up there and set it on fire. Well, I mean, somehow we think that's it. Man, you end up cutting these babies up and laying the parts out and all this stuff. Do you understand what I mean? I mean, you could be sitting there with blood all over you, guts in your hands and everything, going, how in the world can this be a sweet savor? Well, it didn't say it's a sweet savor to you. It says the giving of his son through you is a sweet savor to the father. It might not be sweet to you. It might be costly to you to give God his son instead of give him your best. 
you know. All right, so let's go ahead and go to Leviticus again. Leviticus chapter 1. And, you know, while we're turning there, I just want to say, you know, I appreciate the hands that went up for doing things like helping us get stuff done around here, uh, you know, moving the chest or doing this or that. But let it be Christ. Don't just do something. Don't just do something. And frankly, don't just not do something. But give the Father Christ. These are opportunities. You know, you can say, well, I, I remember somebody once said to me, well, it kind of must be nice to have a lot of slave labor around here. I thought, my God, if that's all it is, then let's shut the place down. I, that's how I feel. If that's all it, you know, this place was raised up so that you could dig a ditch and it could be for Jesus. So you could move a, a, a refrigerator and it could be for Jesus instead of just doing it for the man because you work on a job and that's what he asks you to do. And, well, you're paid for it, so then you better do it. Or because it's your own home and you got to do it or whatever. Do it for the Lord. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it heartily as unto the Lord. Don't just do stuff and don't not do stuff because every time you don't you're missing out on an opportunity to give the father his son you could be just you know it could be like the day of atonement where there's more than just the atonement sacrifice of the scapegoat and the other goat that's killed uh, there's, there's a ton of burnt offerings going up man this was a good day I got to give all kind of you know offerings burnt offerings sweet savor to the Lord not just required thing. Let it be voluntary. <clears throat> Leviticus chapter 1. And let's just, let's just read into this chapter and see, see what we got here. <clears throat> well, let me say this first before we start that. And that is, this, we're going to just read the first chapter. So we're dealing with, first of all, the burnt offering there are three sweet savor offerings, the burnt offering, the meal offering, or meat offering, and the peace offerings. <clears throat> right now and for a while, we're going to be dealing with the meaning of the burnt offering as it as applies to Christ and as it applies to us. <clears throat> All right, Leviticus 1.1. 1, 1. And the Lord called, <clears throat> called unto Moses and spoke unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, you shall bring your offerings of the cattle, even of the herd and of the flocks. If his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Do it before the Lord. If you're going to do it, do it before the Lord, it says. <clears throat> and he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. Now, this, this word atonement does not mean clearing up a sin problem. It can mean that, and that's the way most of us re read it. But basically, it's just, it is uh, offering him so that there is union and there is clarity between us. And what is that clarity? Christ. Yeah. Well, you, you raised your hand, and I said yes. Amen. Amen. Okay, verse 5, And he shall kill the bullock before the Lord, and the priest and Aaron's son shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood round about upon the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. <clears throat> and he shall flay. You know what flay means? It means skin it. 
and he shall flay the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. You see what I mean? It's not just bring a, uh, an offering up there, shoot it in the head and throw it on the altar and light it. You know, spray it with lighter fluid and then throw a match on it. A lot more to this thing. <coughs> and, by the way, we are going to major get into this and see why you can't just as a believer shoot it, meaning shooting Jesus on the cross. In other words, just letting him die and then just say, okay, now, Lord, light it and I accept what you did. There's supposed to be an involvement in this. <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> and the sons of Aaron, the priest, uh, shall put fire upon the altar and lay the wood in order upon the fire. And the priest, Aaron's son, shall lay the parts, the head, and the fat in order upon the wood that is on the fire which is upon the altar. But its inwards and its legs shall he wash in water. And the priest shall burn all on the altar to be a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. Two things to note here that we really get into. One is these sweet savor offerings are always made by fire. In other words... It comes under testing, it comes under trial, it comes under fire. And that's when we may miss the fire, we may avoid the fire, we may avoid the test, we may avoid the, the being involved with sacrificing and just live our own life, but that's what that represents. It is not just, a, it is a fire offering and it is a sweet savor offering unto the Lord. <coughs> okay, and then um, verse 10. And, and if his offering be of the flocks, namely of the sheep or of the goats or, or for a burnt offering, he shall bring it a male without blemish, and he shall kill it on the side of the altar northward before the Lord, and the priest Aaron's son shall sprinkle its blood round about upon the altar, and he shall cut it into pieces, and its head and its fat, and the, and the priest shall lay them in order on the wood that is on the fire which is upon the altar, and he shall wash the inwards and the legs. <clears throat> All right, um, let me explain what we've read. It sounds like we're repeating. It started with saying, and we'll, next class we'll really get into this, or maybe not next class, but soon. What we're reading here is a burnt offering for an individual. That's you. Individuals can bring burnt offerings. There's also the congregation burnt offerings. The congregation daily sacrifice is lamb. If it's the congregation, if it's the body, if it's the tabernacle, if it's the temple, if it's the congregation, lamb, that's what you offer. But if it's an individual, <coughs> there are actually levels based on your involvement with the Lord. When it says bullock, all that means is a young bull. That's what we just read. Then we started reading into a lamb or a goat. Um, and uh, then, and it's telling you to do exactly the same thing until you drop down to verse 14. And then here's the offering that a poor person can bring. Uh, verse 14, and if the burnt sacrifice for his offering to the Lord be of fowls, then he shall bring his offering of turtle doves or of, young, or of young pigeons. And the priest shall bring it unto the altar and wring off its head and burn it on the fire and the blood thereof shall be wrung out at the side of the altar. He shall pluck away its crop with its feather, cast it beside the altar on the east part by the place of the ashes. And he shall cleave it with the wings thereof but shall not divide it asunder, and the priest shall burn it upon the altar, upon the wood that is upon the fire. It is a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savor <clears throat> unto the Lord. And so you see the progression depending on um, the, the scriptures in the Old Covenant would say something like this, depending on your status or be, be, depending on how substantial you are. If you are a poor person, then you bring two turtle doves. Can anybody think of anybody in the New Testament scriptures that brought two turtle doves for a burnt offering? Mary and Joseph. <coughs> <coughs> the, 
these levels make such a difference. When we get into it, honestly, if you're open to the Lord, it'll blow your mind. It's going to blow your mind what this is all about. It's incredible. For most Christians, they have no clue, so they, can't re they don't relate to the Lord through the fulfillment of the old. It's simply living some sort of religious, modern-day Christianity by, based on culture. But Jesus fulfilled something. And that's what this is all about, is that we are walking as the fulfillment by being his body. We are walking in, in fulfilling these things. Even though he fulfilled something at the cross, he is yet the fulfillment of all these things. <clears throat> all right. So, and then there's a... Uh, just a few scriptures over in Exodus. Let's turn over to Exodus chapter 29. And I'm right now I'm just sort of laying the groundwork. We need to read these scriptures, and uh, hopefully the Holy Spirit will quicken this to you later on. Exodus 29, verse mm, 38. We'll just read down to 44. Now, this is that which thou shalt offer upon the altar. Okay, let me say this before we get going here. Now we are going to be reading about the whole burnt offering or the burnt offering, but this is for the congregation. What we just read in Leviticus was the burnt offering that individuals could bring. Now we're about to read the daily sacrifice burnt offering. Now this is that which thou shalt offer upon the altar, two lambs of the first year, day by day, continually. The one lamb shalt thou offer in the morning, the other lamb shalt thou offer at evening. In other words, you're with the Lord in the morning and the evening, all through the day. <clears throat> um, and with the one lamb, a tenth part of flour mixed with the fourth part of a hen of beaten oil and the fourth part of a hen of wine for a drink offering. So let me add this in. It's not so important that you remember this right now, but in, in, the burnt, in most of the burnt offerings, there was a meal offering included. There was also a drink offering included. I'm not sure how much, if we'll even get to the drink offering, Lord willing, we'll get to the meal offering. But there is a separate meal offering. But the burnt offering is so fulfilling that it includes so much to it. That in, uh, Let me just say this. I think in one sense the burnt offering represents what Jesus did on the cross when he covered everything. I think it just covers all of it in a nutshell but you still should study out all the others. But I really believe that the burn off, and here's why I believe that. Because you see people like um, Moses and Noah and Abraham and all these guys, they never offered sin offerings. They offered burn offerings and it covered everything. So that's, that's where I'm getting my information for believing that. <clears throat> all right. Uh, and, the, uh, and verse 41, the other lamb thou shalt offer at evening and, and shalt do thereunto according to the meal offering of the morning and according to the drink offering thereof for a sweet savor, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. This shall, shall be a continual burnt offering throughout your generations at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord, where I will meet you to speak there unto you. And there I will meet with the children of Israel, and the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. Now remember, we're the tabernacle of God, folks. His glory doesn't just come because we're sitting there praying or dancing. His glory comes when we start offering the burnt offering, when we start giving him his son. And then he says, then he comes down and sanctifies the temple, the tabernacle. Um, Verse 44, the last verse we'll read here. And I will sanctify the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, and I will sanctify also Aaron and his sons to minister to me in the priest's office. All right. And then uh, one more set of scriptures, Numbers chapter 28. And these will be the last scriptures we'll read tonight, Lord willing.
again, I'm trying to just lay the groundwork for what I'm going to be sharing later. If I don't give you this now, we'll have to keep laying it over and over. Numbers chapter 28. And <clears throat> this, th it's actually Numbers chapter 28 and 29. And this is an interesting set of scriptures because it begins by describing the daily burnt offering that we just read in Exodus. But then it starts showing you all of the special feasts and times, and it tells you, I want a burnt offering for this, like we talked about the Day of Atonement, for the Feast of Trumpets, for the Feast of Unleavened Bread, for and he, he starts giving a certain amount. Well, this is what I want for this one. This is what I want for this one. Do you think all this has significance somehow in the Lord, or is it just junk written in a book that we don't have to pay any attention? We just read John 3.16, and that's good enough. I mean, I mean really, think, just think about this. Is that, do you think really John 3.16 covers all of this kind of stuff? And I say, no. Jesus is the one who said in John 5.39, search the scriptures. And when he said that, there were no New Testament scriptures. Search. The scriptures, they are they which testify of me, but you will not come to me that you might have life. He's, so he's saying, search the scriptures to find me as life. He's not saying search the scriptures to find deep, to, to be a scholar, a bi biblical scholar. You need life, and that's what he's saying. So, so anyway, let's start with just the, the daily burnt offering here in, verse, uh, in chapter 28, verse 1. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, and saying to them, My offering and my bread for my sacrifices made by fire. Made by fire. I want you to notice every time it says stuff like that. For a sweet savor unto me shall ye observe to offer unto me in their due season. He didn't say just throw it up any time you want to. Offer it in their due season. And thou shalt say unto them, This is the offering made by fire, which ye shall offer unto the Lord. Two lambs of the first year without spot by day. For a continual burnt offering. Now this is interesting too. The Passover was said to be, I want a lamb of the first year also. Israel didn't become a nation until they left Egypt. But the lamb existed for at least one year before they came into being as a nation. Because he said, I want a lamb of the first year. In other words, there was a lamb slain before we ever got into trouble. <laughs> That's the Passover. <clears throat> this is saying, I want a lamb of the first year too. <clears throat> All right. Um, a lamb of the first year without spot, day by day for a continual burnt offering. <clears throat> the one lamb shalt thou offer in the morning, and the other lamb shalt thou offer at evening. And the tenth part of the, basically we read all this, Verse 6, it is a continual burnt offering which was ordained in Mount Sinai for a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. And the drink offering thereof shall be the fourth part of a hen of <clears throat> for the one lamb in the holy place shalt thou cause the strong wine to be poured unto the Lord for a drink offering. <clears throat> and the other lamb shalt thou offer at evening. Like the meal offering of the morning, like the drink offering thereof, thou shalt offer it a sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. All right. <clears throat> what we just read is basically sort of copying what we just read in Exodus. Now we're going to change gears. And he's going to start showing you that this burnt sacrifice understanding of Christ is meant to fill up everything. He's, he's about to... If you could mark it down like, like this, okay, let's say that there's um, 365 days in a year, so we mark, uh, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, all the way down. Okay, every one of those lines represents a day in the year. <clears throat> at the top of it, morning sacrifice. At the bottom, evening sacrifice. Okay, so you got 365. You got double that because you got two for every day. All right, that's a lot of... That's a lot of lamb. Well, who's the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world? Who's the lamb of God that we're supposed to follow? Two different things. One, one they said, behold the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Passover. Sin offering. 
But then they said, Behold the Lamb of God, and they left, the disciples left and followed him. All right, that's a lot of lamb in a year. <laughs> Amen? I mean, that's a lot of lamb. That's a lot of Jesus being offered up. But we'd only begun to offer here. Because beginning with verse 9, verse 9 is the Sabbath. Okay, verse, uh, let's see. <clears throat> verse 16 is the Passover. Verse 17 is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. See if I can make this out, because it doesn't say. I have to remember where everything is. Um, verse 26 is the first fruits, and that one is mentioned. Um, chapter 29 and verse 1 is the Feast of Trumpets. Um, verse 7 is the Day of Atonement. Um, verse 12 of chapter 29 is the... Um, Day of Atonement, Feast of Tabernacles, first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. Um, it's the first day of it. Verse 17 is the second day. Verse 20 is the third day. If you'll look real quick, it'll say, and, and on the, like verse 23, and on the fourth day. Uh, verse 26 is the fifth day. Verse 29 is the sixth day. Verse 32 is the seventh day. And verse 35 is new beginning where the whole new year begins to end and come back to Passover again. <clears throat> All right. Beginning with verse 9 then on the Sabbath. Okay, well, let's do it like this. If I've got 360, and they, they used the calendar a little bit different than ours, so it wasn't 365 days, but it was close to that. <clears throat> they went by the, the lunar year instead of the solar year. <clears throat> All right, but basically it's close. So, you got, you got one lamb for every day, or, or one lamb for the morning, one lamb for the evening, every day. But every seven days, there's a Sabbath. And he says, besides the regular thing that you've got here, this, of this thing, besides that, verse 9, the Sabbath, two lambs of the first year without spot, and two parts of hind flour, and uh, verse 10, this is the burnt offering of every Sabbath, besides the continual burnt offering and its drink offering. Okay, so let's sort of fake that. Let's mark that every, every seven days out of 360 days, okay? So that's two more lambs, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, 52 weeks in a year, okay? So there's one, you understand, that's, at le that's a Sabbath for 52 more, and that's uh, 104 more to add on to uh, 600, you know, we're, we're getting up close to 1,000. That's a lot of lamb. It's a lot of Jesus. Okay, we'd, we've only just begun. <coughs> All right. Um, then drop down to the Passover, verse 16. And in the Passover day of the first month is the Passover of the Lord. And in the 15th day of this month is the feast. Seven days shall, th shall unleavened bread be eaten. All right, and verse 19 tells you what you offer. And you shall offer a sacrifice made by fire for a burnt offering unto the Lord, <clears throat> two young bullocks or bulls, and one ram, and seven lambs of the first year. Okay, so let's start tacking two bulls up there, and let's put one ram there, and then seven lambs. All right, we just increased it again. I'm doing this for a purpose because I, when I get into explaining what the burnt offering is, you're going to go, oh, my God, God wants Jesus in this way terribly bad. He's not fooling around. He really, really wants the lamb, and he wants the burnt sacrifice, okay? <clears throat> so the Bible's not just wasted. It's just not ink on white paper. It's God trying to talk to us. Anybody want to be talked to? Well, then, what did Jesus say? He that hath an ear, let him hear. And if you don't, ha you know, we all, have, we all have these things, these little rubber things beside our head. Jesus said, he that hath an ear. He wasn't talking about these because everybody had them. He meant, is your heart open to hear or are your heart drowned? Is my seed just falling on concrete in your heart or is it landing and, and catching? <clears throat> all right. And I'm not going to be able to give the full explanation tonight. I'm only laying this for what's coming. But, but we have to see this. Um, 
the intensity of the Lord in this. Verse 26. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> and in the day of the first fruits, there it is, verse 27. Uh, if you drop down in 27, two young bullocks, one ram, seven rams of the first year. All right. <clears throat> Notice verse 31. You shall offer them beside the continual burnt offering. Right? In other words, I just told you to offer a whole bunch more, but keep giving me the continuous flow of the sweet savor of Christ out of your life, out of your vessel. Am I right or wrong? Is that he's saying beside this, you keep doing the continual burnt offering. All right, <clears throat> chapter 29, verse 1. It is the day of the blowing of trumpets, or what, what is called the feast of trumpets, Okay. And he says in verse 2, one young bullock, one ram, seven lambs of the first year. Okay, and we've been getting that a lot here, seven, seven lambs. Okay, uh, verse 6, beside, this is Numbers 29, verse 6, beside the burnt offering of the month and its meal offerings and the daily burnt offerings and its meal offering, their drink offering. In other words, you give me all of this beside, uh, including the monthly offering and its meal offering. <coughs> All right. And then verse 7, And ye shall have on the tenth day of the seventh month a holy convocation. All right. This is the day of atonement. So on the day of atonement, you get... Um, uh, where is it? One young bullock, one ram, seven lambs of the first year. And then verse 11, no, no, the 15th day is the, the Day of Atonement, verse 12. And then look at verse 13. 13 young bulls, two rams, and 14 lambs. That's the first day. The second day is verse 17. And on the second day, you shall offer 12 young bulls, two rams, 14 lambs of the first year. Okay, that's only the second day. There's seven days, and then uh, the eighth day brings you into the new, new beginning. Verse 20, on the third day, 11 bullocks, two rams, 14 lambs. Verse 23, on the fourth day, 10 bullocks, two rams, 14 lambs. Anybody see what's happening here? Anybody see a change in numbers? Anybody know why this is called the book of numbers? Anybody think there's anything to numbers? What is happening is he's dropping off one bullock every time. He's dropping off one bullock, the choir. You're getting closer and getting closer, getting closer. There's more Jesus that it's already filled and coming out of you. It's already satisfying the heart of God. He's not requiring as much because you've already, you're already seething. So you're already oozing Christ. Okay, and then um, I don't remember what day we went on, but we can just keep <coughs> we can just keep going down because it's uh, verse twenty nine is the sixth day with uh, eight bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs. Verse thirty two on the seventh day, seven bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs. And then verse thirty five on the eighth day, you shall have a solemn assembly. Uh, Verse 36, but you shall offer a burnt offering, a sacrifice made by fire, the sweet savor unto the Lord. One bullock, one ram, seven lambs of the first year without blemish. All right. I do, I've do. i actually got a study, and I didn't bring it tonight, where I show all of this, and it's an incredible number, just of burnt offerings. Not counting sin offerings, not counting meal offerings, not counting peace offerings, bank offerings, not even adding up the drink offerings. What it is saying is that God is dead serious about us not just being Christians, not just being Jews. Imagine God saying this to the Jews. To me, this, listen, I'm, I'm speaking as if God were speaking to the Jews. God would say to them, to me, you are not a Jew because you have the blood of a Jew. You are not a Jew because you were born into this religion or you joined it. What makes you Jewish 
is that you offer unto me what I want offered. What makes you Israel. And that's why Paul said, peace unto you and upon the Israel of God. I don't think he was, I think he's calling us the Israel of God. Not, you know, because we are now not walking in shadows, just killing animals. We're walking not just every day, but in the morning and then in the afternoon and on the Sabbath and on the, the first day of the month and on the uh, every remembrance of the Day of Atonement and on the Feast of Trumpets and then the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread and every opportunity. We talked about unleavened bread and what that meant. But forget digging out all the leaven out of your house. He's not just wanting you to get rid of stuff. The sweet savor offerings and the, and the uh, offering of the burnt sacrifice is not getting rid of something. It's adding something to God. He's the one enjoying the savor. He's the one satisfied. He's the one that, that and, and I'll probably get into it eventually, but I believe that that's what Jesus was when he stepped down into the waters of death. When he stepped down to be baptized of John. I believe that for him, he was being the, the burn offering that was going into the waters of death <clears throat> and what came up was the essence of my son. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Well pleased relates to a sweet savor sacrifice, something that pleases him, not just something that kills something that's ugly that should have been put to death. Do you kind of understand what I'm saying? I mean, the father is basically saying this is a sweet savor to him. He's not... It didn't represent Jesus dying on the cross there. It represented Jesus coming and saying, my whole life is yours. I'm burned up. I lose my existence in the earth. I lose all of my hopes and dreams that I would have apart from fulfilling your plan, Father. I am the whole burnt offering, and I will continually be that. that sound all right? Does that make any sense? All right, we'll stop. I just want to say, though, before we do, and that is if anybody's tired, me and Raphael and Debbie and a few others have reason to be tired. We, you would not imagine the, the work that we have been doing for day, for weeks now. And I'm telling you, I've seen Jesus in some of these people. I've seen Jesus, continual giving of Christ instead of themselves, and I'm, I'm just blessed and thankful. Father, we just ask you to make your life real in us, not just us following a Christian religion, but following a life, not, not some guy seated in heaven with long hair and a robe that we committed ourselves to. But a person a life that lives within us. Father, may we not miss, may we not be like the Jews who missed Jesus, never saw him as the fulfillment as they kept on doing what they were doing. When the veil was rent, they sewed it right back up. May we not do that in a Christian form and just totally miss the living reality of you while we just go through the motions. Jesus, we want to search the scriptures. We don't want to just read them. We don't want to just do our daily devotional. We want to search the scriptures for you because we're hungry for you. We want to cry out. We want to cry out for you. We want you as our life. We want you filling us and overflowing. Lord, like David, my cup runneth over. And Father, you've brought us to this place, such a time as this. Lord, not to waste three years and be pretty much what we were before, except we've got some new facts. 
but that transformation may happen, that we might actually really live as the tabernacle of God with you living inside of us. We're just the tent. You're the life that lives inside. Help us, Lord, to help us, Father, to see this. But, Father, I just know that you do want our heart. You don't want us just waiting until Christ is revealed before anything happens. But he won't be revealed unless we see the value of Jesus and count everything else loss to know you in this way. And that it be worth everything to us to want you, to seek you, to be with you. Father, we just look to you. We look to the work of the Holy Spirit within us. We trust that every class, every moment that we have around this place, that you are at work in us. That, Father, each one of us are bringing more Jesus into this place, not less Jesus, not opening doors for demons or anything else. We're bringing, we are the the carriers of Christ into this place. Father, help us to be conformed to the image of your Son. In Jesus' name, amen. We're dismissed. God bless you. Um, Deb, did you want to get the people you needed to get some help? Oh, oh, yeah, we got cake first, right? We got birthday cake.